Yeah, does that look right? It looks perfect. Great. Um, hi, so I'm Jonathan Oppenheim. I'm from the um, University College London in, um, in London. <laughs> um, and we're uh, part of the University of London, so that includes Imperial College and King's College and Queen Mary. Um, and I'll just tell you a little bit our MSc um, in quantum technologies. We have a few MSCs in different topics, um, general physics as well. Um, so the MSc in quantum technologies, it's, um, it's both uh, coursework and, um, and a master's thesis. So the, um, the coursework we include um, some core um, modules um, and that's advanced quantum theory, obviously. Um, and then a, a, a very specific course in quantum communication and quantum computation that also includes quantum cryptography um, and things like that. Um, and then we, um, there's a, a choice depending on what kind of direction you want to take your master's of four other courses. Um, and so some people take the more, um, uh, the root of say uh, implementations of quantum technology. And so, um, you know, there's courses like advanced photonic devices and theoretical condensed matter physics um, and Adam, you know, um, AMOP physics effectively, as well as um, we also are home to the Center for Nan Nanotechnology, um, the London Center for Nanotechnology. And so there's all kinds of nanotechnology courses that you can take as well. Um, and then some people also take a more computer science direction. They might take um, programming courses and they might take machine learning and data science courses. Um, you can choose different courses from our electri electrical engineering department or our computer science department, um, depending on availability. Um, so that's the, the uh, course part of the MSc. Um, and um, that's usually done in the first and second term. Um, and also during the first and second term, you are doing um, a research project and two case studies. So those are the additional components um, that are part of the MSc. Um, and I'll talk about those. Um, let me just um, let me just say about module module selection. Um, I guess the idea is that um, people consider different directions. So, for example, you may be interested in the arc, different kinds of architecture for quantum computing. So, you might be interested in superconducting qubits, photonics, or ion traps. And we have experimental groups in some of those topics and uh, theoretical groups as well. Um, so, you could do your thesis in those topics. Um, but then there's also a fair selection of courses uh, to do with that. So you might be interested in the architecture of quantum computation. Um, some people, especially those with a more computer science background, are interested in um, you know, programming quantum algorithms, um, either noisy quantum algorithms for noisy quantum computers, near-term quantum computers, um, maybe things like error correction um, and things like that. Um, and then some people take it to, are interested in, in, in other areas of, of, of quantum computation and, and computer science. So complexity theory, quantum cryptography, or even it's a bit of a, maybe a controversial topic, but things like quantum machine learning. Um, and then of course there's the, you know, quantum technologies is of course not just quantum computation. There's, so there's the whole uh, field of, of quantum, other quantum devices and quantum measurement. Um, and so that is a, a, another direction you might take your master's. Okay. Um, so the, the, I guess the most important component is the, um, is the project. And so I just have written a few different projects um, that we had uh, last year. So we had people in doing quantum chemistry um, and quantum computing for quantum chemistry, usually on noisy devices. Um, things like the variational um, eigen-solver mo uh, model, things like that. Um, and then we have a, a strong theoretical group in, say, topological, you know, measurement-based quantum co computation and topological um, computation, topological um, qubits, and things like surface codes. And so someone, you know, a few people did projects on topological quantum codes and error correction. Um, we also have experimental groups. So for example, someone did an experimental, um, I should say, 
was planning to do an experimental project in on spin qubits in, in silicon quantum dots. Um, because of the pandemic, um, a lot of our experimental um, uh, subjects um, you know, ended up being more theoretical in the end, or uh, in some cases involved a bit of computer programming, uh, computer programming, sorry, or simulation of experiments, um, unfortunately. Um, but I guess for next year, we're hoping we'll be able to be back in the lab. Um, already, some groups are back in the lab, um, although at reduced capacity. Um, so uh, things like quantum um, communication. So, so, so someone did a project on ion trap using ion traps to make a, um, a, a, a to send qubits uh, with high fidelity um, down uh, down a wire. Um, someone did a, a project in quantum machine learning, um, and then we also um, you know we're, we're not um, we're quite broad in our interests so. so um, not everyone is so focused on the technology technology aspect. A lot of us are interested in quantum computation and quantum technologies because it teaches us a lot about quantum theory and the foundations of quantum theory. So, for example, someone did a very foundational topic of operator, uh, um, you know, ways of reconstructing quantum theory from basic principles with just a few axioms. Um, and someone did a, a research project on an MSc on um, on quantum gravity, related to quantum gravity, you know, holographic. There's this, uh, there's this whole field of quantum information theory applied to quantum gravity, and they were looking at um, something called a, you know holographic quantum codes, which is at the intersection of quantum error correction and quantum gravity. Um, so one of the great things about UCL is we have a really uh, a large community, uh, research community in quantum technologies. Um, it all fits under, if you go to ucl.ac.uk slash quantum, um, you can see the different researchers and what they're doing. There's profiles of some of the researchers um, and some news from, uh, from our research groups. Um, and um, most people, you know, are, are going to be uh, find projects they're interested in by approaching researchers. Um, and there's a database of, of research uh, project topics that you can go through, um, which are which are given out by um, our various researchers in um, at the UCLQ part of the UCLQ research community. Um, and it's also possible to do research projects with people outside of um, UCL. So there's various quantum technology companies um, around London and at Cambridge. Um, and so some people do find placement with some of these technology companies and doing an MSc with some of those technology companies. Um, and I, um, in addition to this thing called UCLQ, which are all these quantum researchers, we have a, something called Q Hub, which is a skills hub. Um, and that features various um, you know, people uh, who are doing training in various aspects of quantum technology. There's a summer school, for example, that some people go to. You can probably, um, that might be something that you're interested in. Um, and then London in general has a, a, um, all kinds of, you know, because of the size of the city, various events that um, people take part in. So there's, a, there's, I think, two quantum computing meetups because both Google and Microsoft have their headquarters right beside UCL. Um, and so there's various, they're interested in quantum technologies, obviously. And so there's quite a few events, some put on by them and some just around town. Um, and then a, a lot of the um, uh, students participate in the research groups um, with a supervisor that they have. Um, and so it's a good opportunity to meet other you know, PhD students and postdocs and participate in any uh, group events. There's seminars um, and uh, you know, a, a bi-weekly quantum lunch and things like that that people can participate in. Um, let me just quickly say the prerequisites. Um, most of our students come from a physics background. Um, you should have at least a 2-1. Um, 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 but some people do come from a computer science, engineering, or mathematics background. Um, those that do should make sure that they have taken um, a, 
a sufficient a level of, of quantum theory in their uh, program, in their degree. Um, and so um, the prerequisites for the MSc are the same as the prerequisites for the core modules. And in particular, if you go to the prerequisites for advanced quantum theory, you will see the sorts of things that you need to um, have, you, know, you should have taken a course at your university which covers these sorts of topics. So perturbation theory, um, Dirac notation, um, harmonic oscillators, of course, and um, solving the time independent Schrodinger equation, um, the Born rule, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think that's, I think that's everything. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy to take uh, any questions that people have. Thank you, Jonathan. You know, as I, as I do my uh, quantum climb myself, I come from computer science side of the house. And, uh, you know, when you started going through some of those physics terms just a, a few <laughs> seconds ago, I, I actually recognize many of them. And uh, I, I feel good about that. Uh, born rule, etc. Um, well, a lot of a lot of the, a lot of this. So, uh, you know, we quantum technologies and quantum information theory is one of those subjects which is on the interface of a few different um, subjects. So, we don't, you know, we do, we want to be flexible, and um, a lot of computer scientists will have taken, say, a linear algebra course, which you know is is halfway there to studying quantum theory, um, yeah. and. Um, you know, some people do study like a MIT courseware or something like that, um, but we do need you know, some indication of proficiency in in um, in those sorts of topics. That, um, but you know, a lot of people are able to take in computer science. A lot of the students are able to take at least some courses in in quantum uh, mechanics. Yeah, and you brought out a a, a really important point i think for a master's students is that uh, that you've got your university of course and the program associated with it but you also it's it's embedded in an ecosystem there in london and you can and the broader uk so that there is a community of sorts that that uh you know really can play into uh you know your educational program a lot of contacts be made uh, both social and scientific. Uh, that's, uh, I had gone to Pittsburgh, for example, and, and we interacted with other universities quite a bit uh, in, our, in our geographic region. Right, yeah. So I think that's a, a real big important factor there, I think. Yeah, and I think that's one of the nice things about being in London is that there, there just is quite, you know, there's, there's just too many, to, too many different things to choose from in some ways. Yeah, it um, can be is, overwhelming. Which is, yeah, which is, you know, a nice problem to have. Yes, indeed. And plus, you got the end users right there, the financial area and, and that sort of thing, if you're thinking computation. Yeah, I think people should, you know, just be aware that there, you know, that there is probably a lot of high expectations for quantum technology. And we do find sometimes that, you know, we get students who are interested in, in finance, you know, applications to finance of quantum computation. And I think it's important to remember that the horizon for these technologies is probably quite a, you know, a fair way down the road. And it may be you know, a couple decades before we have a, you know, a full um, general purpose quantum computer. Hopefully in the, in, the, in the medium term, there will be other applications of quantum technologies, but you know, we should just bear in mind the, the horizon to these things. There's a huge amount of excitement. So and there's a lot of opportunities for students to, there's all kinds of startups and you know, popping up all over the place, um, but we should also just remember that the horizon for these things is is you know, not is not immediate, but um, is something that we need to keep working on and and improving our um, experimental skills and improving our technologies in order to to reach those goals. But they're they're you know they're not going to be immediate. Yeah, well put, well put. Any questions uh, from anyone out there? A good chance for uh, some conversation. Well, on that, uh, Jonathan, on that, uh, you know, comment about the time frame here. You know, one of the things I, I share, I share with people is that you know, uh, whether the quantum technology is ten decades, five decades, two decades one decade, uh, I think it, 
you know, someone who has gone through a quantum program uh, at a at a good university like UCL uh, really positions themselves for not only quantum but other other options. Uh, you know, in in whatever field they choose to go into or whatever job opportunities might be out there, because it it does suggest the ability to navigate different fields, the mathematics, the, the physics, uh, and the computational aspects in some cases. Uh, so I think the degree has a lot of value, even if quantum itself, uh, you know, takes a little while to, to mature. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of these things have, you know, it's, it can be quite unexpected what applications things have. And also, um, you know, it's, what is really important is, is in some sense the way of thinking that one is learning and um, and the skills one's learning rather than the you know the specific details of that um, yeah. um, but uh, it's I mean it's, it's a very exciting time to be doing quantum information theory and quantum computation that's uh, that's definitely the case and it's these things are you know it's very hard to predict exactly what will happen but um, I like to uh, make sure that people's expectations are um, you know yeah the, the, I feel like with things like machine learning and artificial intelligence and quantum technology, those three things, there seems to be this uh, quite a lot of hype about that. And we should just bear in mind that uh, you know the, the history of science is uh, is not very easy to predict. <laughs> well, what's cool is we're all at a point in this particular science. I think we're at a not at a point, but a uh, an era where you know an individual can have an impact if he or she, you know, finds a secret sauce or, or what have you. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of work to be done and we all can participate in it. Uh, no, no question about that, I think. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's also just, you know, for me, what is what I love about um, quantum information theory is the insight that you get into quantum mechanics. Um, I think you just gain a much deeper understanding of the fundamental theory and, that's leading us in surprising directions. So um, I, mean, I come from, uh, you know, I'm at the moment doing most of my research on gravity and, and, and learning lessons from quantum information theory that apply to gravity. So it's, it's a bit of a, it's quite a crazy uh, field in many ways with all kinds of offshoots happening. That's all spooky to me. <laughs> all right, anybody? London's a great place to be, actually. I lived in London for a year, um, I guess around 10, 15 years ago. Really had a good time there. Right. It was uh, during the European Monetary Union conversion. Right. Well, we're going in the opposite direction now, so. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, but. Um... Yeah, COVID's, COVID's kind of taken over the news on that, um, on the Brexit thing. Well, I'm sure uh, you guys can appreciate a little break from that. Yeah, yeah. There. we might have both at the same time. Uh, one question, uh, getting to the, to, to the master's program, and I'm just kind of polling everybody to get a sense of it. How long, do you know when the master's, the MSC, uh, started there at UCL? So you, um, one year, two about, years? It's about four years old, I think at least maybe five. It started out fairly small, so I think the first couple cohorts, we had at most three students, and then... Mm -hmm. It's, we've been doubling every year for the last three years. Um, so it's, it's, it's grown quite large. We're, you know, the, this year's cohort is um, about 20 to 25 people. Um, um, and it started, you know, started off as three when I started uh, three or four years ago. So it's, it's, going, it's grown very large, I think, because of all this, the interest that there is in, in quantum technologies. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's valuable. You know, many, many programs globally are just starting up. And right. uh, so that's yeah. encouraging because we all tend to start small, you know, with the two or three or three or five or what have you. And, uh, uh, you know, the administrators want to see larger numbers probably. Uh, well, but, uh, build yeah. it and they shall come. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing we want to make sure of is that everyone finds, uh, you know, a, a good project. So, in some sense, we're bounded by the number of researchers. And fortunately, at UCL, there's just a, a large number of researchers. There's always, you know, there has been for quite some time. Um, um, 
just because UCL happened to have some quantum information theory researchers from the very beginning, you know, from the early days. Yeah. So we're fortunate in, in that, I think. Yeah, I'm sure you have a deep bench there when it comes to professors. Hmm. So, okay, uh, I know you got to run uh, off to another Zoom meeting. I appreciate the, the time, Jonathan, and the energy here.